Hello again. Today I thought we'd look at um, the TBS 6205 DVB T2 Quad TV Tuner Card. Uh, recent purchase. It's obviously for um, UK Freeview HD or DVB T2 if uh, you have that in your region. It's a PCIe card. A quick look inside the box and see what's in there. Not a great deal to it. It's quite small. Okay, this is not a cheap card. Um, it cost me, I think, £170 in the UK. Um, but my aim here is to have maximum capability for recording multiple channels on my TV server at home. Okay, uh, it comes with a few bits here. What we've got here is we've got a low profile case adapter. So you could change the adapter size if you've got a low profile case. And we've also got an um, F type male to coax RF female adapter. Um, you'll actually need to buy another one of these if you want to use the RF out on the card, but because it only comes with one. There's the low profile adapter that I won't be using. And also we have in a bag what looks like a portable aerial. I'm not even going to bother trying to use this here. Um, I don't have a particularly good uh, signal in the area that I live in, and I doubt very much where I'd receive anything on this, but uh, depending on where you live, I guess... Your experience may be different. Uh, personally, I won't be using this at all. I'll be plugging into the aerial socket in my house. Okay, so driver CD, RF adapter and low profile bracket. Let's have a look at the card. Okay, well, as I said, it's surprisingly small. Um, it is a quad tuner card. Um, I'm using this to replace a two tuner black gold card that I have in the past. I've never used a TBS product before. I'm hoping that it's going to be reliable. This particular item, the TBS 6205, is a relatively recent addition to the range. I think it replaced a previous 6285 card, which I no longer see for sale. So I think this is a recent addition to their range. Let's... sir. Uh, just put this adapter on here. As I mentioned, uh, if you want to use the second output, the two there's, there's a aerial input and then there's an RF output below. The RF output, you'll need to buy another one of these. I bought uh, three of those adapters on eBay for 99p, so they're not expensive. But uh, if you're buying one and you know you'll need it in advance, then get them ordered up because it did take a while to come. That's the card. Okay, here's my server case that I use for my media server. Um, it's an old PC. It's a Core i5-2500 um, PC. This is the PCIe slot that I'm going to put my card in. And this part of the video is where I demonstrate that it's actually very difficult to put a card in whilst holding a camera in one hand. <laughs> so a bit of editing, but basically we're going to take the, uh, the slot guard out. Obviously try not to let it fall on the motherboard. We're then going to put the card in. Takes a little bit of fiddling just to get it aligned properly in the slot. It's a lot easier if you're using two hands rather than the one I am. Quick edit. And then push the card into place. There you go. Okay, put the screw back in and we're done. And on the outside of the case, okay, that's the screw being tightened up. And on the outside of the case, we can see there's the aerial adapter for the uh, input for my aerial. Okay, so I'm going to box the case back up again. And let's have a look at it in operation. Okay, so this is actually the server in operation. Uh, let's have a quick look at, uh, I use Media Portal uh, backend software for my networked media and my TV. And let me just show you, here's the card, the Windows drivers. I downloaded the latest versions from the website. Um, actually, I think they've been changed twice since I bought the card, so that's a good sign. Go to. The, I'll show you the website at the end of the video where to get the drivers from, but you can see the cards there installed in my server. I've had no problems at all with Windows recognizing the cards. They've worked perfectly so far without, without any hiccups at all. So I've been very pleased so far with the reliability and performance. And let's just fire up a media portal client on the server. 
I actually use Koji as my front end, but we'll, I don't have it on the server, so we'll just have a quick look at the cards. What I've done here is I've actually set it up recording six simultaneous HD channels, really just for the purposes of a gen uh, demonstration. Um, I don't know what the theoretical maximum of number of channels that you can record on a quad tuner card using Media Portal is, but I think it does depend on what is multiplexed together, but it's a significantly more than six. But I thought a good demonstration would be six simultaneous channels. I think they would meet most people's needs. Saw them there on the EPG. And you can see here on a client, on a different PC, it's actually on a client PC over the network, you can see Kodi, the front-end software, telling us it's recording those six channels and, and rotating simultaneously through them on the home screen. Okay. Here you can see them on the EPG. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, just for demonstration purposes to show you that that uh, the server seems pretty comfortable doing that. Let's have a little look now at the uh, quality of the signal and the HD signal in particular. Obviously, you'll only be able to see this if you're watching the video in HD. <laughs> okay, and we'll do a couple of channel changes just to see um, how quickly it channel changes across the network. Bear in mind, this is over my network, so it's obviously a little bit of network delay in there, but I'm pretty happy with the speed of the channel changes. It doesn't take too long, as you can see. Let's do another one. Okay. So as I've mentioned, the drivers work very well under Windows. This is Windows 8.1. Um, I have the card working under Windows 7 on the server. Um, I've had no issues at all with the installation, the drivers, and indeed there is some good support available for the card, so I've been generally very pleased. I found it to be a smoother and less problematic than the original installation of my Black Gold card, so I'm pretty happy. Okay, let's go and have a look at the website um, where it's currently being sold. If you You'll get linked to this website if you go and look for the card from the manufacturer's website in the UK. I don't know who PCIEX are, but you can buy the card here. I didn't buy mine from here. I bought mine uh, online from another retailer. Um, there is a link to the card and a link to where the downloads are available is just further down here. Okay, and that is the latest current driver for Windows and other... It, you see it supports... Uh, Linux as well. I haven't tried that personally, but I believe it does work under Linux as well, and there is a driver available. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you briefly was the support forums. Support forums are at a different location, which I will link in the show notes underneath. There is a specific section of the forums um, for this card, and having monitored, having monitored it a little bit, it's active, and there appears to be technical support available through this route should you need it i haven't but i think it's a good sign that there's a lively community support there as well and that's it really hope you enjoyed the video and let me know if you've got any questions